right? Okay, so what we have, a pH of 7 is neutral. All right, everything over on this side is an acid. And everything over on this side is base. All right, and I'll draw, you know, some little arrows here. The farther you get away from seven, which is neutral, you have stronger bases going this direction. The strongest base you can have is a pH 14, all right? And the farther away you get from seven going this direction is the stronger the acid you have. So you can consider neutral being neither acidic nor basic, not you know, zero of either one of those basically. The farther you get away from seven is the more acidic your solution is. The strongest hydrochloric acid you can have is gonna be way over here. The strongest base that you can have, you can get over here. So I'm gonna put, you know, um, stronger to indicate that the arrow is pointing to stronger. It's a pretty easy concept. Now, how do they invent the pH scale? Where did it come from? How do they calculate it? All that stuff we're not gonna talk about in this section. That's stuff for later, okay? But the point is, is there's a scale. There is a test that you can literally dip a stick into to whatever liquid it is and look at the color and match the color up to some chart and you can tell, okay, this is a pH of three. This is a pH of 4.5. This is a pH of six. So it tells you if I have two acids, for instance, one of them is a pH of six, one of them is a pH of two. Which one's gonna be you know, more caustic? Which one's gonna be more reactive? Which one's gonna be stronger? It's gonna be the acid with a pH of two. And the exact same thing holds true on the base side. If I have a, a pH of 9.5, because you can have pHs in, in between these numbers, right? Nine, uh, pH of 9.5, and then I have a pH of 12, you know, 0.7. Which base am I gonna be a little more scared of? It's gonna be the one with a base of, of a, a pH of 12.7 or whatever it is, because that one is a stronger base. Okay, now I've already hinted uh, before, you know, in the last section, but I'll go ahead and restate it again now. We have acids on this side of the pH scale, right? And we have bases on this side of the pH scale. And in the middle, we have a neutral. And I'm noticing now the way I've drawn my pH scale, it's not, it's not symmetrical. It's just because I'm not great at drawing stuff. Seven is in the middle. There's an equal length, if I would have drawn it correctly, would have been you know, both sides of neutral would be an equal length. So the fact that I've compressed these numbers together doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just the number you look at that, that indicates the strength of the acid or the base. But we have acids on one side, bases on the other side, neutral in the middle. And I've already told you before that acids and bases love to react. So if I have an acid on this side, the pH scale, and I have a base on this side of the pH scale, and I bring them together, we talked about in the last section, what is it gonna to like to do? It's going to like to react. Specifically, it's gonna to like to form water because the acids have abundance of H+, which are hydrogen ions, lots of hydrogen floating around the solution. The bases have a lot of hydroxide ions floating around, which are OHs. And when you take a bunch of Hs and you stick them next to a bunch of OHs, you get HOH, which is another way of saying H2O. Water is in a very, very stable molecule. It loves to form when it can. So it's very, very easy to form. And once it does form, it likes to stay bound as a water molecule. So if you have acids, you have bases, they come together, they love to form water because that's what those ions in solution are gonna, gonna want to, to do. All right, but also because of the way the chart is constructed, I think you can see if you, if you have an acid and you have a base and you combine them, what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna neutralize. <clears throat> the resulting solution that you have once that reaction is completed, if, if you've set it all up right and you actually uh, make the reaction go to completion, is you're gonna end up neutralizing and ending up with a neutral solution at the end. Because all of those excess hydrogen ions, if you let them combine with enough hydroxide ions, so there's no more hydrogen ions floating around, then there should def by definition be no more acidi uh, acidic part of the solution and no more base part of the solution, and so then you have a neutral thing. So if you, if you combine an equal pH of some acid with an equal pH of a base and you have enough of both and you let them both completely react, then there shouldn't be any more H plus left over, any more hydrogen ions left over, so there's no more acid left over, and there shouldn't be any more OH, which are hydroxide ions left over if they've all reacted. So by definition, if there's no hydroxide ions left over and there's no hydrogen ions left over, then there's no acid component left over and there's no base component left over, it's just neutral at that point. 
And that's what acids and bases do. They neutralize each other because they react and they form water, basically.